All right, guys, this is the uh, best choice Jeep. Um, it's going to be a quick video. I just wanted to let you guys know. So how this happened, we're uh, talking about the rear axle completely bent on this one. My son was driving it in reverse, full speed, and he hit a 6x6 six six railroad tie. And if you want to check out what it did, it actually bent the entire axle and it wasn't even turning it didn't damage anything else from what I can tell um, so we're gonna go into this and we're gonna check it out and see what's going on all right now I already took off the nuts and bolts off the wheels and I also already took out the screws out of that holds the axle in place um, just to save a little bit of time on the video all right so let's zoom in here and let's see the uh, let's see what kind of damage actually happened and I already got a replacement axle all right so let's take this out you guys can see that already looks pretty bent all right so get the wheels off here and yeah that's uh that's significantly bent and uh yeah all right so it looks like the only way we're going to get this out is to go this way since this is the straighter side so oh yeah this is really in there um all right let's see if we can turn this all right so i'm gonna have to wiggle this out all right. obviously if this was straight it would probably go in way easier but since everything's bent and nothing wants to come out have to play with it a little bit so let's see what we can do here um so what we're just gonna do is now the axle size is actually seven sixteenths all right half inch is gonna be too big it won't fit through these gearboxes all right so seven sixteenths all right and it's not you can get a three foot length and then you're gonna have to cut it to size all right so if you're if your ride is bowing or anything like that you should really replace these all right because oh yeah he he hit this up pretty good so I mean you can you can see that that's it's a pretty good hit so we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to redo this so now you could see I already got a replacement rod sitting back here a nice silver one okay so we're gonna replace this bent one okay with that silver one there like i said that's a 7 16 replacement it's a three footer okay size wise they're uh i'll show you the size difference okay size wise you're talking we line these up here so we got to cut a little bit off here all right because it's a little too long unless you're trying to go dualies maybe you know but probably not all right so we're going to trim this we'll be back cut this off all right and then uh i'm going to tap uh you'll see there's a little screw hole here for that's for the um the cotter pin to go through and then this is the other hole where it bolts up um on the actual uh, brace for the car uh, that the motor I guess your motor mount or whatever the axle so you have the bolt that goes through here and your axles going that way and the bolt kind of holds this all in place all right and these are the, these are the bolts I took out okay and then um, those go like I said those go through the axle so all right let me get that done and let's see where we're at all right so as you guys can see i got a little uh hole started here or actually finished i should say um and this was i just put this on the end of my drill here okay and just drill straight down make sure that they're even i marked them uh to the stock um you know i just took the stock rod and uh just checked it out and you probably won't be able to see this but it's just five uh, 5 30 seconds all right 
was the uh, yeah, let's see if I can focus in anyway 530 seconds that's the drill bit that fits right through okay and then uh, here's the stock bolt all right that fits right through almost perfect there no resistance right we're just gonna clean it up a little bit okay make sure there's no filings all right do the same thing with this one here all right. okay that's all good all right now that we got those done all right um the next step is to add in the the ends all right and that's going to be um where the cotter pins go on either side here okay and that's just going to be you know just uh whatever size cotter pins you have you're going to drill a hole i'll let you know what size i'm using um it's probably going to be the same size as this uh possibly a little smaller i think um i don't think the cotter pins are that big that hold the wheels on um and then uh we'll go from there and then uh, we'll do a test fit and see how everything works okay so we're back i uh, finished the ends for the cotter pins all right and as you can see right here all right they are all done all right i did one on that side and i also did one on this side here okay you could see all right and all those holes should be finished i'm going to clean them up and then uh we should be good to go we'll uh we'll give it a test and uh, put it all together and let's see uh how everything went all right so we are finished here with the rod and as you guys can see i beveled this down a little bit all right just uh so it slides in easy uh we got our uh cotter pin holes um then we have the uh shock uh shock mount bracket motor bracket hole okay for both sides okay one on each side and let's see if uh let's see if this fits all right i'm gonna take the uh, gearbox come up through here and we're gonna take this i guess it, this would be considered a, a bracket for the motor and shock so it's like a combo okay we're gonna slide it through there and we're gonna slide it to the other shock through the motor bracket and you can see how easy this one's going in compared to the bent one this is just sliding in perfect okay now we have to align the holes now if everything's good these screws should drop right in and let's hope okay that's one so that's good and this will be this will be big if this one fits and two okay that means i did my job my measurements were right all right and let's see we got this here and this here we'll tighten those up i'm just going to use this bar here just to uh, oh, sorry just to hold this up just in case because this does get a little heavy once you start putting everything back together all right so i'm going to take this here now these do have the uh the locking nuts so you don't have to kill these okay just want them nice and snug all it does is hold the hold the uh axle from sliding back and forth and in place all right so this is just uh you know a very small steel square stock and it's not very strong on these jeeps so just be careful not to crush it you just want to like i said like i said snug it up by hand you should be good okay so that looks pretty good all right that's nice and solid perfectly straight all right we'll put the wheels on make sure i got these on the right way all right and now all right got the cotter pins fit no problem cotter pins fit in perfect washers are on cotter pin is bent and oh, let's see we'll ruffle my fingers here okay that's 
one. And let's get the other one on this side here. Let's get this one. Okay, this one should slide right on. And if the measurements and everything's right, this wheel, everything should be good. Let's see. Put the washer on. This cutter pin's shot. I should probably use a new one, but for now, it's good enough. And we'll slide this in here, and we're good. All right, so everything works. Brand new axle installed. I think the axle cost me, I think it was $14. I got the better, better steel, um, the better steel axle, supposedly. It's supposed to be a little stronger. All right, and then let's uh, let's just check this out and make sure everything works. And we're gonna start this Jeep up. And we'll hit the pedal. And it looks like we have success. All right, guys. Well, that is how you replace an axle on the best choice Jeep. All right, um, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comment section. Uh, make sure you subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later. Good luck.